Okay, how's everybody doing? So in this episode, I want to talk about the signature scene and selective compression. I'm in the process now where, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the barge slip is on hold. It's almost done anyway, but there's no point because as you can see it, it has to come in and out, right? Like this is all being built right here. So it's, you know, modular. Like there's just rail joiners here and then here. And this whole piece now fits nice. Took quite a bit of work to get this, but I'm glad I did it because now I can move this barge slip, right? Like I can basically, see, pull it apart and out of the way. It's out of the way now. I can get in here and do all this composing of the scene and warehouse flats and so on. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just take you through like a couple of areas and I'm going to insert a, a a photo and show you all the things that I want to model like based on all these photos that I took when I was down on location okay uh, over a year ago and I want to show you why I have these photos up here and how they're going to relate to the actual actual signature scene like in each sort of vignetted like see these photos as vignettes within this particular module a footprint these are all little signature scenes within the larger hole, right? Okay. So I'll start down here and then I'll insert the photo and show you. Okay, so as you can see, I'm halfway into module B here. So this is the approach to the ramp, which is I'm quite happy about because I can really model it very close to the prototype because it does actually curve around a corner here. Except I've got to compress, you know, the actual, you know, there's a sort of a yard, a sort of passing yard down quite a ways that runs under the Alex Fraser Bridge. Okay. 
You might even have an opportunity to put in sort of a, you know, model of the Alex Fraser Bridge part of it. We'll see how the scene develops, but um, I'm really happy with this particular signature scene and how it's working out. I've had to obviously apply selective compression. You always do. You never do in your mind, though, right? You notice that? Like the beauty of the human mind and our sentient, we, we can just contain so much with multiple video and images in our mind. And, and we just, you know, in the theater of our mind, see it in our model railroad. But when we actually start to do the work, we realize, oh boy, do I ever have to make compromises, you know? But this is part of the process. A lot of dry runs, photographs, you know, have them up for inspiration. Um, you know, in the next day or two, I'll be building up these warehouse building flats out of 3 8 ply, like the core. I'm going to sheet them with plastic, and I'll show you why. But they're going to be built up uh, building flats, and they're not going to run flat against the wall. I will not do that, okay? Try to offset your flats by just a little bit. It'll make a really big difference on the visual, and it'll really enhance the depth of the layout. It'll make it look deeper than it actually is, okay? Like, I'm not a fan of just running flats against the backdrop. It just looks one-dimensional that way. So, and then the big Axton building, which I'm really happy about. I did some research on it. They're a steel fabricating company. It's going to be right here in this corner spot, which is why I didn't fill it with cork yet. But all, all this area here, too, is going to be all pretty much pavement, right? Because uh, Axton uses this track here to load up stuff. Like if they build a massive, you know, whatever they build, right? They roll the flat cars in and load up, right? So it's kind of cool. And then I will be making a compromise with this turnout here, which is actually on the prototype that runs along the warehouse. But I'm going to actually use it as a runner on and run it like a parallel track down through this section here. But anyway, I'll talk more about that as we move along into the fall here. But yeah, so yeah, the model railroad season is upon us. So with your signature scenes and selective compression, be patient with it. You know, immerse yourself uh, in the experience because it's a lot of fun. You know. Get get photographs, if you can, of the area that you want to model. You know, an area that really strikes you, right? Like, I really love this area. When I went down there, there's nobody around there. It's really low traffic there. In fact, I don't even think they even use this barge slip much anymore. It's not very often that they do, but um, it's still a really cool area down on Anasis Island on the, off the Fraser River, you know. And so I just want to be really careful that I... Uh, make a, you know enough compromise for for a little extra operation, but I tr stay as true as I can to the prototype in terms of uh, you know a signature scene and applying selective compression. Okay. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, thank you to all my new subscribers as well. I really appreciate you. And uh, you know, when you subscribe and watch a commercial, you really are supporting the channel actually. And you're supporting me, uh, you know, to help, you know, just cover some of my time. I put a lot of time, like full time actually, into all of this, right, to share it with you. Because I think it's important for the whole railroad community to share our experiences. and to encourage one another to get better, at, right? Because what a great hobby it is, right? Okay, so thanks for tuning in once again, and I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you on the next upload.